Good morning. Welcome back. Look at that shiny brand new truck. Phil washed it Saturday was here and tried doing some detailing stuff. And I don't know, the one spray detailer stuff we used, it kind of left it just, just a little rough. Um, so I think we're going to hit it with our synthetic clay bar. This thing here works really well. I've done some on the side. And, ooh, it's smooth. It's nice. So, um, yeah, we're going to get that truck out of here soon and keep working on some other equipment. I am going down to prep some more concrete. We're going to try and pour the rest of that driveway here probably Wednesday. I don't think we'll get to it tomorrow. This one looks real good. Um, I still got some stakes in here that we've got to get pulled out. I can't get them by hand, so we're going to use the chain or something on the backhoe but that's kind of a two-person job it's hard to hold it and lift and yeah all at the same time so dad's gonna come down a little bit and help me uh we're gonna start scraping some of this stone out here and getting it down to where we need to be so we can set forms i did some measuring over the weekend um let's see so from that corner we were at six six come out 10 feet we need to be an inch lower six seven another 10 feet six eight another inch lower and then here, 6'9", kind of the low spot before we come back up at the road here a little bit, was at 6'8", on the, the low side. And that's from my laser. It's, yeah, those numbers don't mean anything by themselves. They mean something next to, relative to one another. And then, yeah, so 6'8", there, 6'6", six, six over here. So there'll be two inches of fall across, um, which is about what the road has. And then 6'5", uh, which is lower. Or no, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, all the water's gonna go that way. Basically, we're shoveling it right into the road ditch. So six four, six three, and that was six two. So there's four inches of fall up here. There's two inches of fall by the time we get down there, and it kind of comes back away from the road just a little bit. So we're not pushing water onto the road. Just, that's the goal. But it also means we've got to take about an inch or two of stone out here. We've got to take six inches of stone out by the road, and then we got to deal with the tube going uh, through the ditch there, which there's almost no water that goes through it. I don't think I've ever seen any ponded water up here. Um, so it doesn't have to be real big, but you can see it's peaked up uh, through the driveway there. It's floated a little bit. We're going to have to fix that and get it deep enough that we can get good concrete cover on it, or it'll just crack apart. Well, we're starting to try and get stuff down to grade. We're only an inch or inch and a half off until about that point. We're going to have to take a bunch out by the road there, but up here it wasn't so bad, so we're trying to just backblade it a little bit. I already scooped a bunch out and put it in the trailer over here so we can try and save some of this stone. We also got to get the sod out of here, so Dad helped me. We went and got all these stakes out. This should come together fairly quickly, actually. So Dad got the sod scraped out on this side since we kind of shifted the driveway over, plus we're a little wider than we were before. Um, but this side was mostly in the grass and I don't want to pour concrete on top of the grass So we scraped that out. We're still just a little high in the center here Back blading with the bucket isn't working no good. So he's gonna use the back of the scratch it Should be able to be a little bit more aggressive Just pull that down into where we need to fill in now. So uh, We got to come down an inch to an inch and a half there. and We got to come up three over here Well going that way we're in pretty good shape here that corner is really good. We're just a touch high right here, and we're a touch low up in that corner. So we need to bring some more fill in here, but that's where we scraped all that sod out, so we expect that. Going the other way is a bit of a mess at the moment. Dad just got my old tube pulled out from the road, so um, now we gotta start getting it graded and figuring out what we gotta put in there for a new tube. Uh, there was a dual wall aid in there Given that we're burying this one in concrete, we're going to go with something a little bit smaller, I think, and a little bit less thick, so it's not, I don't see so much height. Um, I'm considering just using PVC, because it'd be a really thin wall, but we got to get up six inches below the surface of the concrete, so it's got to be buried, which we should be able to do. Dad went to go dump the uh, old tile pile somewhere. Um, I was checking. Our irrigation is still running. We have four passes left, two lengths of the field. See that? Yep, it's right in the center now. 
and then it's going to work its way back to the home point and we're going to shut her down so i may regret that decision in about three days when it's 90 degrees out and things look terrible but that corn is just about done there's no reason to put more water on it now we're right at about half milk line uh, when i looked at it yesterday that's typically when you would stop irrigating anyway um, and given that we just made a pass we just put water on it it should have enough to finish and to get um, to black layer with what we've got so that's where the irrigation stuff is at this is going to go well hopefully we can get this framed up or um, you know leveled up and the forms up today and i don't think i'll be able to pour tomorrow afternoon i doubt i'll be able to get help and concrete lined up that quick but um, wednesday morning should work well we've made a little progress here we've got forms up we got the straight part of the driveway and up and we're working on the little flares out by the road here we're not going to dig all of that uh, berm out and the fill right along the road until closer to when we're ready to pour because it's kind of a liability don't want somebody to hit it so we're going to get the form in and then probably backfill around it uh, and then dig it out again when we're ready to go but at least it'll be in place here that's kind of the idea i am going to get some cones and stuff put them along the road so that there's somewhat of a warning but um yeah don't want to get too close right now Okay, we got a few more stakes put in. Um, forms are all set. Grade is good. So I got to dig out along the road there. Like I said, we're going to wait to do that. I do, however, want to put some more fill in. We got to cover that pipe up, and we're really low right in here. So we need to go get some good stones, some the 411s that don't have the, as big as stuff in it, and uh, get that buried and run the tamper over everything. I should put some water on it. Might do that tonight yet. Uh, and then we can mark out where our bar is going to go start doing that if we want however it's 4 30 i'm tired of working on this today and you guys are tired of watching me getting ready to pour concrete and we got all day tomorrow so let's get the drone out i want to fly cornfield around the corner over here um that i noticed some tar spot in about two weeks ago on part of it and not other part and i want to see if we can see a difference uh, from the air yet and we'll just we'll take some we'll do some scouting after we get that fill in there we do need to get that. I want that too buried. All right. Well, we got that covered up. I need to run the tamper over yet. I want to put some water on it. I don't really want to get the hose out right now. Uh, we'll come back and maybe I'll do that tonight before I go in the house. But uh, looks good. Looks really good. So we're going to take this back. Take this back? Yeah, we'll take this back. And we're going to get the gator. We're going to go drive around a little bit. Dad's across the road disking some tie lines down. So we'll go check that out, see how they look. And we're going to get the drone out provided it has a charged battery and uh, see if we can go some, do some flying. I did get concrete lined up. It is going to be Wednesday that we're going to pour, so I'm trying to get help lined up now. Uh, this one's a little bit less than the last one. Won't really be much less work, but the last pour was 16 yards. This one's 14. It's a little bit shorter in length, so we'll get it done starting to see some differences in the bean variety maturities that one right in front of us appears to be much earlier than its uh, counterparts on either side i wonder what it is i have to go and look fuller season that way earlier the way we're driving here and you can see there's a break right there and there those are the two twos and then this is a buffer on the end here i don't know what they are two sixes maybe yeah do have a drone battery so that's good it's a touch windy today but i don't think it's beyond the limits of the drone so uh the great baker family pumpkin harvest started yesterday we got pumpkins lots and lots of pumpkins so these are pie pumpkins these are jack b little pumpkins these are jack-o-lantern pumpkins these are also jack-o-lantern pumpkins i don't know they're a different kind they're a little smaller orange or whatever there's also a bunch up by the house and there's still some over there we've got two different kinds of white pumpkins that you really can't tell the difference some of them are supposed to be smaller than others and there is but the big ones didn't get real big i mean that one there looks different than that one snowball versus something else i don't know 
And then we got some black ones over here that are supposed to be black. Those are kind of cool. And then we got the warty ones. The, the, they took a bunch of them. There was like 15 of them. Boys, were, we picked pumpkins for two hours yesterday. And we are not even half done, I wouldn't say. Uh, there's a ton more out here. We'll probably do some more tonight, I would assume. But, uh, oh, yeah, we got to go basically all of that way. We got white ones out here yet. Look at them all. They're everywhere. There's a bunch over there. Some of them aren't quite ready, but we were getting some rot on some of the earlier ones. And these vines were all planted like two weeks or three weeks later than the first one. So that's why we started mostly down there. Oh yeah, got these big ones here that we haven't picked any of yet. They're supposed to turn orange. That's what I was told. Oh, there's one that we didn't get picked up. There's some more littles. Not most of these, there's a black one. Uh, oh, those are pie pumpkins that haven't turned orange yet. Yep, we got some of those out here yet. There's some uh, more little ones. There's some, um, what am I looking, what's the word I'm looking for here? Oh, uh, butternut squash out here, yeah. We gotta, gotta get those. See, that one there rotted. That's what we were trying to, get ahead of the rot. These look good, they're still growing. More butternut squash. This is where the big ones were, they're pretty well gone. Those ones. A couple watermelons down there, a couple of musk melons still growing. All kinds of stuff. This got a little weedy in this end. My wife's just, flowers look nice. She did a good job. Well, before we fly, actually, maybe out here's a good spot to launch from. Nice, clear, level spat, pad, but I uh, thought I'd watch, see what Dad's doing. He's disking tile lines down, trying to level them up a little bit. I'm surprised he's using the packer. We usually drop that in the fall and just run the disc by itself. It's good. A little more down, at least. The problem with tile in fields like this is that um, they settle and it, it'll be two or three years before we get them kind of worked out where we don't feel them driving across them anymore. Especially these being kind of across the rows. Right where he's at here is on an angle, but over there they run perpendicular to the rows. It's a real pain in the butt. So, anyway, that's good. He's doing that. Let's, let's put the drone on. All right, let's take the drone up here and you'll see all of our tile lines from our big tile project earlier this summer. We're gonna fly over here and fly around dad working in the disc and you'll be able to see kind of the job he's doing, knocking those tile lines down, just kind of breaking up big chunks. He's just driving next to the lines, hanging the wing out there. Um, yeah, breaking up the clods, leveling stuff off a little bit. We'll have to go over these again. We're going to run the disc ripper through this whole field uh, later this fall, but this is just kind of trying to help get them a little bit smoother so when we do have to drive across them, they're not quite so bad. Seems to be doing a pretty darn good job. We are uh, very, very dry right now, so a little dusty. And now we're going to fly over towards uh, the other side of this field where we have some more tie lines, but also these dark green beans up here in front of us. Those are my double crop beans. That's where we finished planting double crop beans that we just kind of threw every variety and open plot bag and stuff that we had in the planter and went and planted them out. They've looked really, really good, but you can see how dark green they are. Uh, that's definitely due to the late planting. Uh, the beans across the road, you can see are started to turn more yellow, the beans right next door. I have no idea what maturity those are. They're not our beans, but they're uh, uh, almost all yellow at this point. So, But the double crop beans look good. They are coming around. Now we're gonna fly across this guy's uh, trees and, and beans over to this cornfield on the other side of the woods over here. And we got some pretty interesting stuff happening over here. You'll notice the strips. This is the high management versus standard practice plot. So we actually have three different varieties in this field, all of it to the right, and then the strip on the left in the perimeter is the 110 day, and then the alternating strips here. So the, the strips that are a little bit greener there are 105 day, everything in between that's a little bit shorter corn is 103 day. But 
Look at the left versus right side of those strips and notice how there's more green on the left than the right. Well, the right is our untreated. It's the stuff that has not gotten any fungicide. It's where I found tar spot two to three weeks ago. And if you look real close, right in the, the center, yeah, it's sort of hard to see here, but right underneath the drone right now, you can kind of see a split in that one strip. That's the split in the high management uh, standard practice plot. So we're spinning around here and it's basically center of the screen right in front of us. Um, the yeah the, the differences out here are uh stark and we're gonna go walk it here in a little bit after this drone video is over and, and show you a little bit more but uh it was really really interesting to see how much that stood out when i was flying the drone over it so and then you can see the green on the ends there that's well there's a wet spot there that was a little bit later but that's uh um the 110 day around the outside so all right, now we're flying back over towards my house. This is the plot field up ahead of us. That is all varietal differences out there. We've got fuller season corn on the left side, and then we got some earlier stuff through some of the strip trials, and then the varieties are in the back. You can see those two strips that stand way out from my back here. That's the 112 days. Uh, and then, then through the center, there's uh, some that are more or less green or yellow at this point. There's also a little pocket there kind of right in the middle of the screen right now. That's actually raccoon damage in one of the 101 day hybrids, I believe. Look at the bean plot. You can see the fuller season beans are a little bit greener except for that one strip through there, uh, but really starting to see some differences in them. And there's the concrete project. And now we're flying back to our tie lines. Quick look at the farm as we head over. But heading back over to where I'm sitting in the gator, right at the uh, point of those tile lines over there. So pretty interesting what you can see from the air sometimes. Now, let's go take a look. Oh, we're going to have to go look at that corn. That was a drastic difference. So you probably saw, and I probably did a voiceover to walk you through this because that's my plan at the moment. Or maybe I didn't, I don't know, but there's a big difference between that uh, corn for where we sprayed and where we didn't. So we're going to go ground truth it. So this is that field that we just flew the drone over. It's the high management standard practice field. Oh, you know what else is out here? We've got our um, uh, uh, emergence flagging trial out here that it's about time to pull those ears. We'll get to it. But anyway, the standard practice side of this plot did not get sprayed with any fungicide. And the corn is about dead. Of course, this corn's about dead here too. So um, now this was the first day we planted corn. This is, it should be about done. But let's get out here and take a look. There's our flag. So this is the split. This is directly in the middle of the 103 day. It's the one that looked shorter in that video, which I know it's hard to tell, but it's 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 kind of the rows that were in the middle of the ones that stood out. Does that make sense? So if we count over 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you can see the height difference just right here. So this is the 105 day, this is the 103 day. The 105 day uh, is much taller. It was a little bit greener in there, easier to see the green color, let's say. Um, this is the untreated section. So let's walk down this row here and see what we see. But we look at just look at these leaves. Look at the tar spot just covering it. That's why this is dead. And so we're gonna walk out here, it's all brown because there's no green left, you can see it. This is the strip that was just brown as brown in the uh, drone video. And there's a little green, but not much. There's not much left. Either side, 103 day, full of tar spot. 105 day, full of tar spot. Now this came in pretty late, right? It was very late coming in, but that's why we spray. Because we get tar spot bad. Yep, she's dead. Can walk out here farther you can see these leaves absolutely coated brown there's nothing left out here let's look at some ears it's, it's not terrible it's not a terrible ear this is 105 day we're gonna break her in half and take a look but it filled out pretty well i can feel the moisture on it it's not as wet as some of the corn ears i felt over the last couple of weeks but you can feel it it drying down 
We've got pretty decent kernel depth, but notice the absence of a milk liner, maybe just a tiny little bit right at the tip of those kernels. This is corn is basically mature. Let's see if we got a black layer. So on this kernel at least, there's not a black layer there yet. Ah, focus. But it's close. Yeah. It's very close to black layer. Within a day or two, I would say this is corn is, is totally done. Okay, now the 103 day over here. Let's look at this. Same thing, it's dead. There's no green left or dried up green. And when you see this dried up where it's it's dry but it's still got its chlorophyll in it, that means it died a little prematurely. Tar spot. Um, yeah, how do these ears look? They're still mostly upright, which is a good thing, but now that it's done, they can they can hang down. Again, not bad. Um, I wouldn't call it anything special, but again, this is the standard. This is not any treated, no fungicides, no additional nitrogen, none of that stuff, or fertilizers, foliars, any of it. So, um, yeah, doesn't look terrible. One thing to note that I do literally like is these ears are nice and loose husks, very open. That's going to help this corn dry down faster and prevent ear mold. That's a good thing. Again, really good kernel depth. We got nice rows around, tiny little cob in there, no milk line. Let's see if we got a black layer in here. Right there, you see it? That little black spot on the tip of the kernel when we break the end off. See, it's stuck in my fingernail. When you got that little black layer, that is basically the kernel sealing itself off. No more nutrients can get into those kernels from the stalk, from the plant, even if it was still alive, it's done. There's as much dry material in this as possible. Now it's just a matter of drying it down to harvest moisture. That This corn, this 103 day, will be ready for harvest within two weeks. Now, this is the dead strip, and the rest of the field got sprayed with fungicide and is not that way. So I doubt we're into this corn in two weeks, but this particular strip would be ready. Goodness gracious, look at these ears on the end. So one thing to note, the outside rounds around here, it's a different hybrid, it's 110 day. It did get sprayed with a fungicide. Notice how green it is. And you get a few plants right here on the end that are still green. Yeah, they probably caught some of that fungicide drift, but it doesn't take long before they're just dead. And this does have a ton of tar spot in it, but it came even later than the stuff out here and it kept it alive. But my goodness, look at these, look at these ears. <laughs> Which one do you want? I mean, I can't even, I cannot tell you how much difference there is in the size of those ears, but you can see it. It's amazing. 110 day, that's a really good corn. So we're back at our flag. We're gonna walk in another 12 rows the other way. So we'll be on that same split, but in the treated section this time. Okay. Now this corn's not green as grass and just, you know, still thriving, but we've got a lot more green tissue. We've got our 105 day over here. Actually, I think I'm off a row. I think it's right here. 105 day here, 103 day here. So we're um, backwards, although I may be handling, holding the camera the opposite direction for you guys, whatever. Anyway, uh, just look how much better our leaves look. Is there tar spot in it? Yeah, but it's not nearly as much. Not nearly as much. Even over here in the 103 day, it's there, but we held it off. And this corn's gonna be better because of it. I'm sure of it. It's amazing how big of a difference that makes. It would have been interesting to see what a second application would have done. But I don't have a drone sprayer yet. So these are both 105 day. This one is the untreated, the one that I pulled a little bit ago, and this is the one that I just pulled from right here in the treated section. Bigger, longer, even if I hold them the same bottom. It's longer, it's girthier. I don't know if you can see that. Let me break them in half and you will be able to. Um, but there's definitely more bushels there. How many more? I don't know. We'll find out when we run a combine. Ah, I can't barely hold it, but that's the difference. Untreated treated. Now let's look at the top halves. Oh yeah, beautiful. Okay, so this is our untreated. Remember we got uh, no milk line. Wasn't quite black layered, but very close. I can just about put my fingers all the way around that. 
here's the treated and we do still have a milk line. Not a lot, but it's still there. 20, 25%. I'm farther, farther from getting my fingers around that one. There's definitely a difference. Um, our fungicide paid off big time. Our foliars may have paid off big time. I'm happy with it. We have much more of the treated corn and our general acres, or at least most of that program, than we do stuff that we didn't do any fungicide or anything extra on. So it's good. My goodness. Then you come out here to this 110 day in the end rows that's also got treated or sprayed. Didn't get all the foliars, but it got the fungicide. And yeah, the tar spot's coming in. It's going to die soon. Really bad on this leaf, but it's still very green. Now that's a maturity difference. So the 105 day, it's it's mature, right? The the ears are almost black layered. It's the plant has done its job. I bet if we break this monster ear open right here, uh, we've got quite a milk line to it. We'll find one that's not right on the end, and it's actually in the corn. So you guys don't think I'm cherry picking, and we'll do that. It's spotty, right? Here's a spot where it's a little more dead. And we come back up here, and it's a little more green. I don't know why. Could be compaction, could be a planter issue, side dress issue, could be anything. But here's a nice green ear. Let's pick it. Oh, you can tell it's different. Looks totally different. Different uh, shape of the kernels and size of the ear, everything. There's a milk line. It's hard to see. But I would call that uh, not quite 50%, maybe a third milk line, something like that. It's it's there. Uh, it's not as far along as that other stuff. It's going to be a little wetter when we get to harvest, depending on when we get here. But uh, it's going. If we get our concrete forms all good and ready to go tomorrow, our rebar and stuff in, maybe we'll come over and pick our, uh, our um, ears from our emergence trial and see if we see some differences this year. The beans sure are yellow. They're turning fast. These are probably some of the farthest along that we've got on the hills. The low ground is still green. The stuff in the back is still green. But like right there, those beans are they're brown. There's not very many leaves left there. Well, I got my drone videos onto my phone so I can edit them later. We're going to walk home since my truck is already there. Oh, I should get the hose out and compact that concrete. Tired though, I don't want to do it. 6:15, and it's dinner time. So, anyway, I'm gonna walk back there and mess with it. We're gonna lay rebar tomorrow. Brock's gonna be here. I think we're gonna get a disc ripper hooked up to the 9R. Uh, start getting some tillage stuff around and uh, harvest prep done. So, and then pouring concrete on Wednesday. Thanks for watching this one. If you have any questions or comments, feel free leave them in the comments section which I'm pretty sure is down below. I usually say down below, but I don't know. Is that where the comment section is? Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video. We're getting real close to hitting that 30K mark on the uh, subscriptions. So let's get there before harvest, please. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Have a great night.